Um, okay. Um, you need to have Node.js, and then uh, one simple command will install uh, Sushi, which is the Fire Shorthand compiler, and Go Fish, which is the uh, Fire Shorthand uh, decompiler, which goes from JSON or XML to Fire Shorthand. Uh, you also need a text editor. I'm going to use VS Code. Uh, it's a very friendly, commonly used system. Um, and there's a nice uh, Fire Shorthand extension for VS Code that um, colorizes the text. Uh, so that helps quite a bit. So I'll assume you've done that. Here's just a picture of where you go in VS Code in order to um, uh, get the uh, plugin. In fact, if you save a file with the, with the extension .fsh, it will actually prompt you uh, to install that extension. It'll say in the lower right, I've got an extension for you that'll, that uh, might work for you and all you have to do is say yes. So that uh, having done, uh, we will uh, start building with fish. Uh, of course, Fire Shorthand is abbreviated FSH. So we have a lot of fish jokes uh, going on, visual puns here uh, as well. So Marianne, I hope you're in now. All right, so let's, there's actually two exercises I'm gonna take you through, uh, hopefully in the time that remains, if I might go over, but I hope I can squeeze it in. Uh, first to build an IG using Fire Shorthand. So there's six steps. Uh, first, the installation, which I hope we've done. We're going to create a project. We're going to author some fish. In this case, we're just going to cut and paste it. And finally, we will, uh, or, or then we will run Sushi, and we will uh, use the, I, the HL7 IG publisher to then create the, uh, the implementation guide. So I'm going to run you through the steps first, uh, and then uh, I don't know how to get rid of this guy here. There you go. Um, so we've we've hopefully installed Sushi. As I say, all this this one command will install the, the software for you. And if you have not succeeded in that, you can consult the you can go to Fish School, click on docs, read the docs, and then go to Sushi installation. Should be very simple to do that. Uh, and I won't show you how um, because that's quite straightforward. Then I'm going to initialize the project by running sushi minus I. I'm going to have you cut and paste some fish sources into a fish file. I'm going to run sushi. I'm going to download the, uh, the publisher, which I've actually already downloaded because it takes some time. And then I'm going to run it to create a very, very simple IG. So let's get going with that. I'm going to keep this up on the right-hand side as I go through those steps, both as a prompt for me and some help for you. So uh, skipping this one, uh, what I've got is a command window. I'm on, I'm on uh, Windows. This works equally well on Mac. Uh, and uh, so uh, simply type sushi minus I, and that will create a project for you. So that's the first step if you're just starting from, from scratch to create a project. And um, it's going to prompt for uh, some uh, information. It's going to ask for a name for your project, for example. I'm just going to accept all the defaults. So this will create something called example IG. So uh, it'll It'll put that in a URL, example.org. It'll give a draft status, and the, and the uh, version will be 0, 010. 0. So I'm going to let it go ahead and do that. And it's done. So what actually happened here was it should have created an example IG right on my desktop, which is where I'm running this command. Let's open that up and see what's there. Uh, so this might be a little small. I hope to center that uh, so you can see it better. It's got, so, it's got a, uh, a set of files. Uh, these are scripts for running the IG publisher. It has an input file. It has a page content file, which has one index.md for markdown. 
And then on the uh, fish uh, subdirectory, it has one file patient.fish. Okay, so it's created the bare bones of a, a project. So now we've got to uh, create our fish sources. So if you were at the tutorial, we created a, a very uh, brief set of uh, fire artifacts by, by using fish in fish online. And I'm actually going to go back to uh, that fish online uh, example. And I'm just gonna nab myself this uh, set of, of fish so I don't have to retype it. So I'm just gonna cut and copy that. Then I'm gonna launch my text editor. And uh, my text editor, I'll launch that in a new window. I'm using VS Code. And I'm going to open this example IG. So just open the folder, find it on my desktop. Here's the desktop. And I've got example IG. So select that folder. I'll make this bigger. So you can see it. And in input, there's already a fish file there. It happens to be called patient.fish because we've, this initialized function just puts like a really minimal patient here with almost nothing in it. I'm just gonna wipe that out and replace it with my example. So I've just uh, pasted it into the name, the patient.fish file, and I'll do a save. Now, the fact that it's called patient.fish does not matter. So how you arrange files, uh, what you call them, that's all up to you as, as the author. So I'm just gonna put everything in one file and let it be. So we've uh, done that now, and we should be able to now compile it by running Sushi. So I'm on the desktop, but I wanna change directories to example IG. So that's where my project is located now. And then I can run Sushi. So I run Sushi, it finds my file, which has that uh, fish source. It then compiles it. It gives me some friendly messages and a pun. Uh, acclamations. Um, we always uh, publish a, a, a pun with each compile to make it a little bit more fun. And you can see that we now have one profile, one extension, no logicals or resources, two value sets and two instances. So what does that even mean? Well, if we go back to our project, uh, we can see that something new has appeared uh, in this, uh, in my directory tree there's something called fish generated now, and it has a directory of resources. And in there are these seven different uh, JSON resources that it produced. Now these, if you were here last hour, these are exactly the same JSON files that you saw in fish online on the right-hand side of fish online. So that's our playground, our interactive playground. This just does it from the command line and it populates the files into, uh, in, into uh, the directory structure that we can use to run our, um, our uh, IG from the command line. So there's one more thing now that we need to do. So let's go to step five. We want to update the publisher. So uh, this isn't done by the sushi init because it's a, it's a big file, a 100, 100 megabyte file. And we have to put it in a, a folder which does not yet exist uh, called um, input cache. So I'm just gonna create a new folder uh, to contain that input cache. And in that input cache folder, I am gonna move the publisher jar Okay, and I've already un downloaded that, but what you would typically do is run the script update publisher and then you would wait as this download happened, but I'm not gonna risk that during the middle of a, a, a live demo. So we've done that. Now let's go to the sixth step. Uh, what we wanna do is go back to our window and run gen once, which is generate you know, the IG once. Um, 
And uh, so it starts to do that. This takes a few moments. If you've run the IG publisher, you'll know that in fact, it uh, sometimes takes a while. Uh, so there's some output. It actually runs Sushi for you from the IG publisher. So the IG publisher is aware of Sushi and it knows it needs to run it because there's fish files present in that directory. So it starts running it. And uh, what I'm going to show is the output when it finishes running in about a minute. It'll have produced a very rudimentary IG. So we'll just wait a moment while that runs. Always seems like it takes forever when it happens in a, uh, in a demo. Um, but let's go to the example IG. And you'll find that the output is in a folder which is called output. It's not yet populated. You won't see anything in that yet until, in fact, it's finished. So we're operating in demo time when everything takes a longer takes longer. And all I want to show you is the resulting IG, which will have those six or seven different um, uh, fire artifacts. Now, I do want to, pro while we have time, uh, there's actually something. So uh, the other folders here that, that are inside input, there's something called page content. And if you're familiar with the IG publisher, this is where you put all the narrative. We just have one file now called index, and that is just the home page, which is your landing page. And that uh, markdown file, in our case, is very, very empty. It's just the default markdown file, so there's hardly anything in it. Um, so you'll see a very bare bones IG. So now it's it's uh, finished, and the way where you find this the actual IG is in the output folder, and it's in index.html. So you just launch that guy into your browser, and uh, here's your very bare bones IG. It is extremely bare bones, but on the artifacts page, you actually have the artifacts that we built in the last session. So our COVID diagnosis is here. The differential is here. The snapshot is here. It looks like a regular self-respectable IG. You can click on things. You can find, for example, the uh, condition verification status that we defined. This is a value set, uh, which is defined. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. We didn't define that, that was predefined. Uh, COVID severity value set is one that we did define. And that guy is here with all four codes that we had. So we've accomplished goal number one, which is to create a rudimentary uh, IG. And I see one hand up, so I'll pause here for a question. I did see a hand up, maybe they took it down or you're on mute. All right, so let's go on. We can have some questions at the end. So I'm gonna switch gears now um, and return to the presentation for a minute. Uh, I wasn't able to unmute. Hi, Mark. Uh, hi. Yeah. I ran into an issue uh, at the last step. Uh, something with Jekyll is not recognized as, yeah, Jekyll has failed. Right, so that's that's part of, Jekyll is used by the IG publisher and either your IG publisher might not be up to date or you haven't installed Jekyll. So uh, I've had Jekyll on my machine for so long, that's how it builds the pages. Um, yeah. So I would I would check that out. It's not a fish thing, it's a publisher okay. thing. Thanks. So um, I just wanna mention, you know, so this is rudimentary. What do you do when you, uh, to, <laughs> actually build a decent IG, well, you'd be adding more fish files. You'd be creating the narrative content in the page content files. You could you could use a configuration file that Sushi provides. You can add to it to customize your menus. 
and add lots of bells and whistles. Uh, so if you want more information about that, you can learn about the configuration file and the rest of it at Fish School, fishschool.org. Uh, here's just, a, I think while it was running, I was supposed to actually take you through this config file, but it has some basic information. That was my intention, I forgot to do that. Um, so let's go to the second part. So what if you're not starting from scratch and you actually have an existing IG and you've been hearing things about Fire Shorthand and you're interested in trying that out? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm gonna give you the Big Bang method. So the Big Bang method is you take the whole IG and you convert it to fish in one go. Okay, so let's give that a try. Uh, just some words before we start that, we're gonna use US Core for this. Uh, really works best on a clean IG. So when you're building an IG, there often will be a lot of errors that show up on the QA page. If that happens, you might have some problems because you've got some invalid definitions. And if it's invalid, it's not always clear how to translate that to valid you know, fish if there's a mistake. So the example that we're gonna do actually has an example of that. So, you know, there's always some bumps on the road, but it's best to use a clean IG. And you can find that either in the IG itself after the publisher runs in the, uh, in the output folder, or you can download the package from the IG. Uh, be forewarned that there's a lot of error checking in GoFish and Sushi which will often find some problems, even in published IGs. And Go Fish, it's nearly perfect, but it's not always perfect. So there's some challenges uh, sometimes with some funky things that people do with, <laughs> with, their, with their structure definitions. So uh, here's the process though. Um, install Go Fish. I hope you've done that already. Uh, create a local copy of the IG, run Go Fish, correct all the problems that you see, then run sushi, correct any additional problems. Uh, then swap out the sources that were in your IG for the fish sources and then run the IG publisher. So pretty simple. So let's, let's do that. Uh, we're gonna skip the install. It's just one statement, npm install minus g go fish. Uh, so that should be very straightforward. It's actually delightfully straightforward. So let's do US Core. I picked that because US Core is actually quite an interesting and challenging IG. So this isn't a trivial exercise whatsoever. So I'm gonna download, I, I've actually pre-downloaded the, the package which comes from version 3.2 of, of uh, US Core and I've unzipped it to a, a folder and that's here on my desktop. Um, I'm actually just gonna work with uh, this IG core package folder far lower left of your screen. And that guy has a whole mess of definitions. Actually, I copied that over to the uh, PowerPoint, uh, but there's, uh, I don't know, I think the official count is a whole mess of definitions, lots and lots. Uh, yeah, just lots and lots and lots. All right, so if I lose power, we're having a big thunderstorm right now. So uh, you'll know if I drop off what's happened. Um, hope that doesn't happen. So now let's, let's run go fish. So what you do is you go to the command line and if you, uh, there's actually some options, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, change over to my uh, US core package directory. You see, I'm on the left and I'm just gonna run go fish. There's no I in go fish, that's a mistake. Uh, minus S, file per definition. And what that uh, option, the minus F, S option does is uh, create a separate file for every file, for every definition. So it'll look most like what's happening here they, uh, in US Core, they have each definition in one file. So um, the first thing that actually happens is it encounters a definition IGR4, which matches another definition, which is already there. So that's kind of interesting. And 
uh, that went by really fast. But what it was set, what was telling it uh, telling us is that actually these two files are duplicates under different names of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, delete this file because it it doesn't belong here. So what essentially happened was that they somehow duplicated that file under different names. Another error which is going by, uh, which I don't know whether you can read it, it says there's a profile with a duplicate name, US Core uh, Respiratory Rate Profile, which GoFish cannot make unique, fix the sources or update the resulting definitions. So. I'm gonna go ahead while this runs and actually do that and try and fix it. So US core respiratory rate profile, there's a duplicate. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm gonna to go to the, the package and I've got this queued up somewhat uh, in the interest of time. And when I searched for US core respiratory rate, it actually popped up twice. Once in the structure definition called US core BMI, body mass index, and once in US core respiration rate, well, it looks like there's a cut and paste error. If you, if you open this file, which has actually the JSON in a compressed way, and, and look for that particular entry, then it's got inside this BMI, it says the name of this is US Core res uh, Respiratory Rate Profile. That can't be right. That's how they published it, but that can't be right. So I'm just gonna change that to BMI because I think that's what they, they wanted. So I'll do a save of that. And uh, then once I fix those two problems, so there were two errors and as it was actually, uh, going on, I fix them. So let's run go fish again and see whether that, uh, that helped us. Now, as that runs, I'm actually gonna go through uh, what I did. <laughs> so here was the duplicate error. Uh, so it, it, it highlighted that error, that US core respiratory rate profile. So I went in there and I fixed that name. I'm pretty sure that what they wanted was not respiratory rate profile, but BMI profile. I actually fixed that not in the fish, which I'm showing here. I fixed that in the, in the JSON. So uh, it's going to generate some fish files as it goes along. Oh, sorry, actually I need to delete the previous file. So, all right, now as it goes along, it's going to delete, it's gonna ask you if you wanna delete what it generated, so yes. It's going to generate fish files that look like this. They're fairly complicated, but this is the entire profile for in fish for US core condition. So it's 37 lines of fish, which isn't bad. I mean, that's pretty shorthand. Uh, actually, if you look at this profile and everything that's being done in this profile, to do it in 37 lines is really not bad at all. So it's got maps, it's got invariants, it's got uh, some, some metadata. If you were here last time, last session, you'll know that the, the uh, up arrow or the little carrot uh, represents metadata. So it sets some metadata, it does some binding, it does some uh, data type uh, restrictions, and it does it in 37 lines for US core condition. Now, while this runs, I'm actually gonna take you through something called Fishing Trip. Fishing Trip is, is actually a, an option that you can run at any time with Go Fish. And what Fishing Trip does is a round trip. So hence Fishing Trip, right? It does a round trip from JSON to, or XML to Fish back to JSON. And then it does a comparison between the original JSON and the generated JSON. So you can see if the generated JSON looks like the original JSON and account for any differences. So this is a way you can check the accuracy of GoFish and Sushi in you know, doing this round trip. So two translations, let's see what happens. So I'm not gonna demo this, but this is uh, the comparison that came from doing that US core condition. And you can see is kind of the typical left-right comparison that you see in 
in GitHub. Uh, and a lot of the differences are actually from moving, th moving blocks of statements around. Uh, so we moved uh, like this whole block uh, from here to here, which has no effect. But you also see a, a new statement popping up that wasn't here before. So you may wonder like, why is this statement here? And actually, if you go to the definition of structure definition and read about what, what uh, element.constraint.source is, you'll say, aha, well, maybe they should have set, set that in US core because it looks like it should be set. So the other thing you see down at the bottom is there's some statements that map to nothing. And that's really interesting too, because have we dropped something that was important? Actually, if you dig into this, you'll find out that all of these uh, statements were actually inherited from condition. Condition, the base condition has a minimum of zero and a maximum of one and a code, the clinical status is a codable concept. So actually in doing this round trip, we've cut out a bunch of unnecessary statements. So the definition that results from this round trip is actually in some ways more sound than the definition that we started with. So we're finished now. This is, this is finished. So we're gonna go to uh, the next step, which is running sushi. So running sushi actually does a little bit more um, confirmation of what we've done. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, oh, Gosh, that was not the right thing to do. Let's go CD uh, input or, or CD go fish, sorry. What's generated, and I guess I should show you this too. What's generated now is a new directory called go fish. And inside go fish, there's an input directory which contains fish directory, which contains all the generated definitions. So that's all the generated definitions here. There's a whole bunch of them just like before. And these are all fish files. Uh, here's a birth sex value set in fish. And if you want to open that, you can take a look at it. And indeed it has fish definitions. So this is all generated fish. So let's just run sushi now on those fish files and see what it tells us. Okay, so sushi is running. We ran sushi in the, in the, in the file, in, in the, um, directory, and it's going to report what it finds. Uh, it's going to, uh, you know, make, it's going to do some checks. And I'll, just to foreshadow a bit, it's going to find something that's wrong. <laughs> it's going to find that on line 22 of US core care plan profile, there's an illegal binding. So let's take a look at that. And it just popped up, this error just popped up. Uh, so we really can't go forward until we, uh, until we fix that. So let's, let's uh, actually go back to uh, take a look at that file. So we're in input fish and let's see, this was uh, the file US core care plan. So let's go all the way down to US core. You can see how many of them there are. US core care plan profile profile. So here's line 22. Um, so line 22 says text doc div from narrative status dot, or from narrative status, which is a value set. This is a binding. So again, uh, Sushi has finished and there's one error and that's the error that we're working on now. So what the heck is going on here with this line? It turns out that text.div, and I did my homework before I came, came in, that's an XHTML value type and you cannot bind things. You cannot bind a value set to an XHTML uh, data type. So that's actually wrong. That, that, was, that somehow slipped through and you actually can't do that. I'm just gonna comment it out and I'm gonna save that because I don't know what to do with it. You know, there's no clear fix for this. It depends on what you want, you know, what you really wanna do. You can't do what they do there. So now uh, we're ready. We've got some, all our fish files. So I'm going to uh, now move those into US core. And I can see that, you know, we got a seven minute or eight minute late start. So it may not be able to finish, but 
I'm going to move these into the IG. So I'm going to open the IG itself. And uh, oh, that's not the right one. Yeah, here's the here's the US core IG. I'm, I actually don't have to do this through the editor. I can just do this through the, the file browser. I'm going to delete where they have their sources right now. So they have their sources in two files, I found out. Examples, so I'm going to delete that. And in resources. So I'm going to delete that. So now I've I've basically taken their IG. I've I've made a branch out of GitHub. I've I've cloned it out of GitHub. And right now it's it's like this hollow IG that contains no definitions at all. And then I'm going to take what we just prepared, which is in the uh, this directory, which you you know I'm going pretty fast here, but I'm going to take that input file. And I'm going to take um, that fish directory and drop it into the inputs to replace the things that I took out. All right, so I'm in the input directory. I'm just going to drop all those fish files. So now I've I've cut the guts out of this uh, IG and replaced it with fish guts. I just made that up. It's another bad pun. Um, so uh, next, and finally, we're going to run the IG publisher. So now I'm going to move over to the directory. I'm going to move out of this directory. And I'm going to go to the US core IG, where I've just replaced things. And I'm going to run the publisher. So I just run gen once. And this actually takes six minutes, seven minutes. Um, under demo conditions in a thunderstorm, it might take eight minutes, but it's running. Um, and it'll produce this. Uh, this is, I'm gonna go full screen now. Uh, you don't have to see what's happening in the background, but believe me, no funny business is happening. It's gonna produce an IG which looks almost, almost identical to the original US core implementation guide, but made with fish. So on the right-hand side, you see what, you know, this US core condition profile. And on the left-hand side, you see the original. And uh, the question is bonus points, do you see any differences? Well, I can't hear you, but I'll give you a minute to, to look at this to identify some differences. And I'll tell you that they're very subtle. If you look really closely, you'll see that all of these are in these, uh, cardinalities are in dark print. And over here, a few of them are in gray. They're grayed out. So what does that mean? This is the differential that we're looking at. So in fact, that was the, those were the statements that Fish cut out because they didn't need to be there. This is the fact, this, this reflects the fact that US core authors have overridden things in condition that they didn't need to override. So the lower and upper bounds on subject, well, in condition, it's already 1-1. One, one. So they overrode it and put it in their differential, didn't need to be there. And when we translated it to fish, GoFish was smart enough to eliminate those statements because they were accomplishing basically nothing. So now you have a more minimal differential. This is a more accurate view of the differences between US core and the base profile. Other than that, this is 100% intact, except we have got rid of that illegal binding. So, you know, we got rid of a couple of things that were like that duplicate name we got rid of and so forth. So I just want to finish by saying uh, some of the advantages of, of Fire Shorthand, and then we'll go back to uh, what's cooking in the oven here. It's still going strong and it will be going strong for a few more minutes because it's a kind of uh, big, IG. So I hope that, you know, from these two sessions, you've, you've gotten to see uh, Fire Shorthand and notice how readable it is and begun at least to understand what Fire Shorthand is trying to express. I've taken you through some of the text operations that you can do, like simply cutting, pasting, uh, you know, 
I've done some searching and some replacing, but this is very powerful. Like if I wanted to rename something globally that occurred 20 times in my IG, very, very simple to do because it's text. It's also because it's text perfect for source code control, putting the fish sources uh, in GitHub or, uh, or, or subversion. This, you know, it allows you to branch and merge and do diffs uh, in the way that you manage large code. So we can uh, then make this project a team project and have lots of people working on it. As you've seen, it does a lot of error checking and incorporates best practices. Fish can do everything you can do by manual editing uh, through the caret syntax and through uh, rules. We've, we, uh, we've added resource uh, definition and logical models. So if you're in a work group and you've got to maintain a resource now, consider doing it in, in fire shorthand. It's also an HL7 standard. Um, we are at STU1 in the fall, we'll be going to partial normative and partial STU2. Um, it's integrated with, it, with the IG publisher, which I've demonstrated. Also, I don't mention it here, but it's all free. It's all open source and it runs equally well on Mac and on Windows. So that's, uh, Almost to the end, uh, I'll just leave you uh, to give another uh, heads up for uh, Chris Moselle's uh, talk on Thursday afternoon at 3.15, where he's gonna show you some really cool tools uh, that we've got uh, Fish Online, uh, Fish School, Go Fish, which we've used somewhat here. Um, uh, we also have examples, which you can trade using URLs some really cool stuff that uh, we've added in the last year to make really a full featured environment for you to do uh, fire shorthand. Uh, so I'll pause there while this is still cooking. And in the end, uh, it looks like that's errored, but actually that error always pops up. So we'll just leave that to cook. And maybe if you stick around uh, long enough, uh, it should be just another few minutes uh, and it will actually generate the US core IG. Um, and we can go through that. I'll stick around for that. But uh, uh, are there questions? Yeah, Mark, sorry, you can actually run about five or seven minutes long if you want to take some questions just because we got that late start. So feel free. Well, I'm, I'm ready for question and answer. Okay, good. Well, I've looked at the Q&A there. Um, I have a question from Amanda. It's kind of technical one, uh, running sushi. Uh, uh, she got a message about, uh, well, an error message about accessing a non-existent property. So I don't know uh, whether that's something that Chris could take a look at or that you can uh, know, uh, Mark, what, what, uh, what might be happening there. Is with, it an error um, or a warning? If, if that's a, if that, a so there's, a, there's a warning that comes from Antler, which is the grammar parser that always happens at the beginning of a, a sushi run. Um, and uh, that does have uh, some scary elements to it, uh, but that may be what you're looking at. Um, it, it's it's to do with publisher scripts from the IG publisher scripts. Um, uh, yeah, I, I see the I see the error there, and it is the warning accessing non-existent property invalid alt number. And as Mark said, that's actually um, it's harmless, and it is related to running sushi in Node 14. If you run it in Node 12, you don't see that problem, and it does come from one of our underlying libraries. And there's nothing we can do about it, but because it is harmless, uh, you don't need to worry about it. Everything will continue working. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to show that error, but I, I don't think I'm going to get there. But take the next question. Okay, another question. Uh, is the order of the elements in the fish file significant? Uh, in other words, will it fix the order to adhere to the fire order? Yes, that's a great question. That, that's a great question. Um, so there are, there are some things that are order uh, that, that you have to do in a certain order. Uh, for example, when you do... Uh, slicing or extensions or components in a like a component in an observation it has to exist before you do uh, before you constrain it but uh, so so that there are some rules that need to occur in certain order um, especially those that create new things 
if you're just constraining elements that already exist, in most cases or all cases, those can be done in any order. So if you're adding a must support or you're constraining cardinality or you're constraining the data types, um, those can generally be done in any order. Okay, good. Does that make sense? Um, oh, hopefully, uh, I didn't ask it, of course. <laughs> so hopefully it made <laughs> sense. It made sense to me, but uh, we have two more question uh, questions there. Um, oh, let me see this one. Uh, can you uh, show again where, um, uh, let me see, how can we generate outputs that can be imported into uh, the fire registry or consumed by a fire server? So I think that's the output from the... Yeah, the it's, it's the output from the IG publisher, uh, which makes a package. Um, so I think the registry uploads packages. Um, so there's a there's a, a, a formal definition of what a package is. Uh, and Chris can say more about NPM, uh, which I don't know, but the publisher produces this package uh, and that is what gets uploaded. But just by running, so that's, that's for the registry, but the definitions themselves can be uploaded to servers. So as soon as you run Sushi, you don't have to run the IG publisher. You can take the definitions, the structure definitions, the value sets, those can be posted to a fire server. Um, I was gonna say one more thing about that. Oh yeah, and also those definitions can be put into a conventional fire project, just so you can cut and paste them and you can use those to uh, create an IG. So there's actually a couple of options for how you can integrate fire shorthand with uh, a, a con uh, an IG that has not been done with fish. I mentioned that we were demonstrating the big bang approach here, con turning everything into fish before, you know, uh, before converting it. But you could even take just one file, one structure definition or one value set, convert that to fish and include that just that file in the rest, you know, replace your definition with that one fish file and then compile it and use the IG publisher to create the IG. You can mix and match fish, JSON and XML. So it's, it's really cool and we've come such a long way in a year, I can scarcely believe it. Uh, all the credit due to, to Chris's team. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, there's one last question, uh, but that already has a couple of answers about uh, having a smaller footprint when you collaborate collaborate with colleagues. Uh, so maybe you can just uh, uh, take a look at that after the session to see if you need to add something there. But I think there were some useful answers uh, on there as well. Um, just yeah, maybe. so uh, perfect timing because uh, the... Uh, the publisher just is finishing right now. So anyway, feel free to drop off and get your you know, dinner or whatever. But if you do want to stick around and, and take a look, uh, I'll, I'll open up the IG that we just built, which is this US core IG based on, based on, um, based on fish. So I'm opening the, uh, not the example IG, that is not what I'm opening. I'm opening US core IG and now in the output folder, the output folder, if you're familiar with it, it's this massively long folder with lots and lots and lots of things in here. And somewhere in here is that index.ig folder. And there it is, so, or index.html folder. So I'm gonna open that up and go full screen. This is what we've just produced. Um, so you can't really tell that uh, this is produced by Fire Shorthand, but here's our condition profile, uh, just as before. And you know, I'd invite you to do this exercise and compare it with what uh, you know. And here's those grayed out <laughs> indices that I pointed out. You know, that are subtly different. Here's the snapshot, uh, you know, which is fairly extensive. If you click through, you can see like uh, some of the value sets that, uh, I don't know which ones are, are US core. I guess let's go to US core patient, which is always fun. 
Um, so it's all here. It's all done through, you know, through fire, uh, through uh, fire shorthand. And uh, all, all the different kinds of artifacts are here and you can browse through it. I mean, that's all that we wanted to do. I'm, I really would love, you know, I think personally, it's easier to maintain things this way. And going forward, it's going to be a lot easier to um, use fire shorthand and do hand editing. But that's up to the authors. Uh, right, Brett, if you're out there, Eric, if you're out there, this is for you. All right, so that's the end of the session. I appreciate your attention and thank you on behalf of Chris and myself. Thank you, Mark, for this presentation and thanks to all the attendees who kept with us and kept trying to get into the session. Hope you have had a good day and uh, we will see you later. <laughs>